Sorry for the delay, guys. A little, little technical pro issue here. Um, welcome to the pre-show with Jamie Fang. Um, we're hosted in Montclair, California at Norman's Orchids, orchids.com. Um, if you're not in the States, obviously, um, your friends are not in the States, you could join our podcast at YouTube under Norman's Orchids. So I apologize about last week that when I did the pre-show with, with the walkthrough, um, I muted um, the phone, so half of it you couldn't hear. So trying to make it up to you today and a little bit more, uh, we're going to do a little bit walkthrough with Ms. Hannibal here. Hi, and there's Norman hi. saying hi, trying to get his show ready. Anyway, well, come on over. Um, this, this section is where I live on Tuesday and Thursday when I do my jumpers, so my little office here. Um, I photograph here, write descriptions here, and do my thing for the jumpers for you guys on Sunday. Come on in. Come on, guys. And we have here with us is a good friend of our, um, Wendy Fisher, that is also on our group. Well, we actually know Wendy for years, way before our group. Right, Wendy? Yep. So, Wendy is going to be um, carrying Hannah so I could have my hands free, since I can't put my phone in my butt today. <laughs> At least we figure out why we were muted. And I had to share, because Roger always liked to have bloopers or beepers or bloopers, whatever you call it. <laughs> so here, here again is our Bloom House. Um, I like to state this house and one, one house before this Bloom House is always open six days a week. So when you come visit, this is what you get to visit. And if you want more in debt tour, um, you would have to place well, make an appointment with Norman or myself or Eric. Um, for people out of town, please don't print your sheet out, like all the stuff on your wish list. We do not pull on demand because our time is very stretched here. Just please order online. And if you want to pick it up here, just order online, pay for shipping. And on the note part, it says pick up at the nursery. And once you pick up, we will deduct your shipping charge. So it will get them to process like an online order because we have what, like Norman said, 20 greenhouses um, to pull your order and we cannot drop everybody's order that, you know, hardly order their stuff online. And some islands are so hard to find. <laughs> you know, we have several departments here. But anyway, here is the Bloom House. Roger, can you shoot a real quick what this week the Bloom House is? Every week the Bloom House is different. As we sell, we restock from the other greenhouses. So every week when we shoot a bloom house, it should be a little bit of variation. Um, I think toward the right where Norman is standing, do you see the semi-elba, which is the white with the red lip? That's a new one, look at that. It's amazing, maybe we should have a Jamie's jumper for me. That's harder to ship, that's too tall to ship. But that's what I use for my accounts. You know, when I do a um, big arrangement and stuff, it's very showy for the hotels or the movie stars home. But come on, let's go. That's follow through. And Wendy here already hand selected something that could have been on my jumper, right? It's a cutie. It's a cutie. I, get, I think I she imagine. likes pink. I think, <laughs> I think Wendy likes pink. So Wendy is the one that um, was really quickly and grabbed the ox blood. Everybody likes them. I know. Because they get to see things that they normally can't I see. I know. People like, I don't think people want to see me do arrangement or spiking or how to tear a leaf or anything anymore. They just want to see the tour, right? Well, because you can see things that you don't know are around. See how Something fortunate new. you are? I know. Right? I drove for an hour to get here. <laughs> but these people had to fly and then they can't even fly yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, another thing. Maybe you could tap into this. Um, I have a lot of members that private message me that we should probably do an event here for the VIP 
and just kind of everybody fly in and depends on how many people I could probably talk to the hotel and get a better rate like you wow. just drive in but yeah to have a function here next year maybe I think we could probably do it in the weekend the same weekend as the Phil Fanatic symposium at the Huntington yeah. um, but we'll have it to have everyone fly in and then we'll open I'm not sure symposium we have dates yet. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll we'll post that. We're we're kind of holding the dates tight because of the pandemic. We yeah. don't know if it's going to be open or not. Um, next year, I'm sure we'll have it um, with everybody. This year, we're still going to do it online. Uh, Phil Fanatic will start promoting that again. Um, we did receive our 501C, so we were told to just kind of relax for a bit till we got our 501C. Now we did, so now we get to promote it again. Um, so is our is our symposium two days? Day and, Ooh, a, half. Day and a half. So come back here after the second day. Right. So if we join the symposium, people are more than welcome to stay another day. Um, we could do just a, a VIP tour for the VIPs. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about that. But let's keep that in mind. Everybody, we'll have a date going, and people can mark their calendar and get flights and stuff ahead of time. But that's what we're working on. It's actually to want to join have everybody come to the nursery of all this we've been hearing i wish i could come i wish i come now we currently invite you to come and join us for the phil fanatic next year. next year next year or anytime you want but i want to do a big deal big thing to invite everybody to stay for the weekend um join us at the phil fanatic at the huntington after that we'll have huntington sunday's half day so we'll have a half day here and have a dinner or whatever oh, here and we'll do a, a barbecue or something um, and a half. And the nursery's closed on Sundays next year. The nursery's closed on Sundays anyway, so you will have our undivided attention. Um, so let's go the rest of the tour. Well, maybe we'll start with this. So a lot of people is buying my baskets. Um, it wasn't intentionally to sell. This is what I've been using a whole year prior to the podcast. Um, this is for my orchid garden in downtown LA. I hang these on my fans, uh, my outdoor fans. And I was growing my, I call it my dumpster diving, diving phalaenopsis that Auntie was gonna throw out. And they were healthy. I don't know why she wants to throw them out. But I, I was hanging these on the, the gates and my Faley uh, is blooming all the time. So then I got really creative and started using things in my wood shutter in my little tiny office that I grow my LED with Jeff's LED lights. Um, so people had me carry this line, so I did. Um, these are, has to be 12 sets because the shipping uh -huh. issue, you know, if That's I sit really sit, and they're hardy. You can feel how, how great substance is. Come on into the camera. Uh, I don't need to come into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Those these, are really nice. these, these still look the same after a year and a half in the outdoor. Are you okay? Because Roger's giving me this whole on kind of thing. So anyway, these are, these are 12 sets minimum because the shipping issue, it still costs me um, close to $30 to ship a box. So each set is $9.50, including the shipping is $1.45 for 12 sets to ship anywhere in the States. If you're California, unfortunately, we have to add tax. But anyways, um, $1.45, people have been asking. I think I have a few people post that they received theirs. It's $145 for a set of 12, and it's landed, okay? And these are the pots. Um, this set is actually going to Cousin George. Uh, everybody's been, again, I did not mean to sell these. I use these for my jumpers, pictures. Um, I love containers, so I think every orchid should have a beautiful container that goes with it. And the number one rule of container is do not take away from the orchids. If you see the container first, we're using the wrong container. Okay, so this is a set of three. It's a hundred bucks landed. Again, you know, 30 bucks went to the shipping. Um, th uh, like I was telling Wendy why I wanted to show this is, this is a six, it holds a six inch, six and a half inch. And if you don't have an orchid that big, what are you gonna do with this? It's too big. So what I did was you just put some foam to elevate it. Then I could put my own arrangement in it, you know, make it, this is gonna be a hard push for you guys, but 
When you push a container, you grab the pot. You don't grab the stem. You don't want to push it by the stem because you'll lovely. You'll hear that cute little crunch. You broke the spike. You could just push it in, right? You can make your arrangement there. Voila! You could use your six inch, or you could use three of the three inch, whichever you like. And that's in general, not just pot. If you have a pot that's too big. That's what you could do. And Jeff, Jeff, what is this? Batman! There you go. That's Jeff's favorite plant, Batman. They're all over here. They're all Everywhere over, you right? Look, there's a Batman somewhere. Just to irritate Jeff. <laughs> Everywhere he goes. So here again, you could put several of your little guys in and you could make an arrangement, so to speak. So a lot of people say, like, I don't have a six inch plant, so why would I need a six inch pot? So you could put a four inch and two, two, three inch, or two, two and a quarter inch. So you can make arrangements just like that. Obviously, this is not the right height, but I, I work with what I got here. Um, oh my God, everything is so fragrant in here, huh? Okay, so come on down. I'll try not to touch my little mic here. Um, so everything on the left hand side as I explained is all table everything on the right hand side are, are rolling benches i apologize to all the old members because you hear this probably a thousand times every time i walk i try to try to display this for the new members um majority of our house on this front house of the property it's all on rolling bench rolling bench is just to give us one aisle that's it so we have more growth space but then again every time it's three of us want to get into three different benches so what we do is get really skinny and everybody get a half of a row while somebody try to get in you know especially when auntie's water and she's not going to let her hose down she's like just just tighten it up a little bit and she's tiny so we just give her enough space to walk to water while we're still able to uh, for norman to pull plants so come on in here, Roger. You can show some paths. You can do a little walk through. Small tour. They're gonna put this one on the jumper. See, the director and the, and the cameraman never communicate with me, but I always like. My voice. I didn't touch it. Oh, no, it's back. It's back. I didn't touch it. Hey, look. <laughs> Anyways, come on. We'll work with what we got, okay? So I think we're up to 2,900 members, and that's because Jeff and I screened this group really carefully. We only want nice people. We don't want any hate words and hate mail and all that good stuff. We would have been 10,000 people by now already, Jeff, if we weren't screening that tight. Um, you know, we'd rather not have them in than to have to delete them because that gets to be more hateful people for our group. But come on in. Oh, I do want to show this plant. Hold on. Wendy, your hand. Yeah, you won't get caught. I don't want to scare you. So, and I was like, whoa! I was just rolling four benches, so that's why it was a little bit harder on me. Hannah, it's okay. Hannah freaked out. See, I love this one. Did you get one? This is really nice. This is um, LP Ochre. I think I had a triple spike on, on the jumper last week, so you guys might want to order one. 2395, Joff. MC2395. These are great. The, it's heavy wax. They short compact and short voice maybe we need to invest on this we're good thumbs up thumbs up yeah so I'm gonna do a little show and tell I, when I do show and tell I actually wanted to show you the crop because it's interesting you normally show you one plant but I like to show you the bench of what this plant is about. See, when they're first opening, the flower is much smaller. 
And when you get them smaller, it's not like we mis mislead you. It just needs time to stretch. The waxy plant always takes time to fully stretch out and open. And, it do, and some, most of them are temperature issue, you know. The temperature guides what color the, the flowers will be. So this is a good one. You guys could order this online. Joff is MC2395. And I had two triple spike on it, or one, and then I did another sole. Okay. These are one of my favorite. I think a lot of people's favorite. Seal terrestrial with silipidensis. Can you see the flower? I'm trying to show Wendy. <laughs> Wendy's behind two people in a in the cramp aisle. These are kind of my favorite. And I kind of have one at home, and it's re spiking another one. I was so thrilled. And my LED lights. Anyways. Oh, yeah. This cross is that FCC, the Parolic one. These are our very, very old plan. But I'm going to show you the flower. This one I'm sending overseas for Young Young um, to work with. Isn't that gorgeous? The color does not fade and it's parolic. And you could tell this is a, one of our very, very old mature plants. It, we have certain sections back there that are old plants that we keep blooming to see how stable the flower is going to be the next year. Um, we don't just mirror clone something when it's pretty, we find it. No, we have to watch it for one year, two year, three years to make sure the flower blooming habit is great. You know, wanna, don't want to get lucky with the first year. So we do watch it two or three years out before we go and, you know, mirror clone 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 plants. Um, I'm going to give them a chance to let me out of the aisle. We usually have music playing in here, but because of Facebook, if we have any sounds on it, he'll pull us up for, you know, oh. copyright or whatever you call the French. So again, here on the this side is where Eric works on his dot-com gift arrangement section. So this aisle has got, you know, decorative sticks and pots and stuff. This is what we started last week. We started here last week. I think I even picked up this Miltonia that, look how great this Miltonia look. Three or four spike. The way they spiked this, I could tell this is going out for shipping, so they needed to go straight up. And here we are, the Batmans. We do have Batmans everywhere. Remember the the Parolic Lewis? This one is the non parolic I will have two spikes on going on for the jumpers this week, the two spikes. Um, these are so cute. And uh, the Parolics are cute, but these are just as cute in their own. I mean, to get, to get a plant this small, this is probably this is gonna go on the jumper. To get this plant so small, but yet so many flowers. Some of my first bloom, the flowers is actually too big for the plant. Um, that was amazing if you guys grow it on. Um, you know, Maylene, uh, did you see Maylene's post? She, all her flowers are, she got. I was green with envy with that. I go, whoa, <laughs> that's a good collection there. Um, Maylene is, um, I think, a, a judge or a student judge or on his way to be an AOS judge. So she, she has an eye for it. Uh, the collection is really good. She's on her way. Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be in my jumper soon. We're just waiting to be more open. So I outgrew my jumper section now that we're really serious about the jumper business. <laughs> um, I have another table that we're, when, we're, when I start pulling stuff this tight, that I'm watching for jumpers will go into my own jumper growing table. But this is my jumper. See, Wendy, how amazing this is. 
And there's only a handful, maybe six or eight plants um, on this type. So here, here, here are your Batman, Jeff. This is when I said, Wendy, can you see this? See what I mean about the, that flower being over so big for such a small plant? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it will be like when it's grown? This is an MC two zero two seven. It's a sun ran, uh, sun, sun Hanover amber. MC two sun Hanover amber. But I, isn't it amazing how the flower is so big? And the plant for the plant size. So imagine mature, especially the Florida people. You guys grow these baby like triple the size we can here in California. We we go visit our friend's private growing ground. It's like whoa, that was just here for a year. It's like triple our size. So okay. So this is the area that I find my jumpers. Let alone in the back, which I think conveniently we have no Wi-Fi. I think Norman did that on purpose. We can never show the back house because I have no Wi-Fi. It's a top secret one. I don't think you you've been back there, right, Wendy? Ah, uh, no, I think you've been back there when we had the open house with oh, yeah. Alfred okay. oh, yeah. on, the tour. on the tour. And everybody should have everybody should have one of these. GW Green World, right? Yeah, I have mine for. I think before Thanksgiving, it still looked the same. It has not changed, has not moved. Um, I even took it back full bloom because I like to take them back full bloom because I cannot get the color intensity in my little office. And I think I have, we have this at home, right, Roger? This one is really heavily coming on. This is like a lot of force spike. MC2293, MC2293, Joff. But anyway, so I'll give you a little tour of the greenhouse, and then we're gonna go over there. I think we cut you off on the voice on the, the breeding table. Nobody could hear me, <laughs> and I'm sorry. Can you show the picture of this house, Roger, the flowers? So this is the next house that, um, it's right next to the Bloom House. So when the bloom house run low, we take flowers from this house and move it into the bloom house. And then we have another 10 beyond this greenhouse in different staging. Um, it's either in, in spike and bud, pea-sized bud. Um, we have a system that keep moving them closer to the bloom house. Yeah, not everything on this side has handles and I don't know why. MC2293 is not on the website, job. Okay, hold on, let me see. Uh, it is, I'm sorry, Jeff, it's MC2298. MC2298, thank you. Luckily, I have my eye watch on. <laughs> I don't have my phone. So it's MC2298. Thanks for doing all this, job for helping us with recap. And actually, recap is different. He actually does my pre-show on my recap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joff is an amazing friend. Um, yeah, let's go this way and wrap around. Look, Jeff, I think it's Batman. <laughs> they're <laughs> everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Sometimes we do that for different lighting, different temperature, just to experiment if it was gonna you know, be affecting the color. Can be found everywhere. everywhere. And so I had a talk with Norman and Joff this morning even asked me, are we gonna release um, the mustache? Norman said next week. Um, he says because he's noticing the temperature doing weird things to the mustache. Um, mustache in one location keeps the mustache, the, the blotches as a mustache. When he noticed he moved it over here, 
the spots are moving differently. Can you tell? And he's going to have it on the right up so we don't get in trouble. When he moved it here, the mustache started being blotching elsewhere but the mustache part. And that temperature ten temperature effect. That's why I say with the Batman, something with other flowers, we have a little batch everywhere in the greenhouse, everywhere in different temperatures to try to experiment. So when people say, hey, how come mine is not as dark as yours? It's temperature affected. And it's not an excuse. It's really happening, guys. And you can see even from the dragonfly, when I, in the middle of last summer, we sent it to May and, and Joel, your, t your color was way better than mine because we were so hot. You guys were cooler. So that in fact will prove that we weren't just saying it, just to say it. So the mustache will be released next week. Norman, see, he's gonna watch it a little bit more. And that answers your question, Jeff. See? This is what I mean by moving the blotches the light. Like. The mustache, it looks like this, right? Instead, we moved it over here. The blotches are going everywhere. And you're going to buy a mustache and your blotches elsewhere. You think I sent you the wrong plant. But it's temperature. So we are forever learning along with you guys, you know, forever learning to kill plants because that's how we learn. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, the Batman? Yeah. Why? I like to keep the They're Batman asking. because I love the Batman. They're asking what the number Maybe is. we should not sell the you Batman. Have to share some. I have to share some? some. I love Batman. Okay, Batman Joff is MC2213. MC2213. And knowing Joff, he's going to crisscross my number right now to make sure I'm telling the truth. <laughs> you know, I, I got to start bringing our glasses here. I'm having a hard time reading these little lines. MC2213 is Batman. I recommend that everybody have one because I even sent one to Roger. <laughs> he has one in his office now. Um, Batman is a happy camper. So this week, last no, week. Happy camper is a different one. <laughs> that's true. No, I know. I said happy. Never mind. You know what I mean by he's a happy camper. But stop it, Jeff. <laughs> you come on my side and try to do this pre show. Yeah, he's already turning red because he's teasing me. So <laughs> last week I shared some of the variegated, the three spike. Um, here we go. And when I do the three spikes, I always check the variegated. The, the has to be really, really pretty variegated. Whenever we do the jumpers, it has to be exceptional or bigger or more spike than what Norman offer. That's a qualification to be on the jumper. Um, I have more three spike. I have more three spike coming on uh, for this week by popular demand. And Norman's got them as a two spiker. Um, the two spiker is MC two one o four. MC two one o four. Keep in mind for the new jumpers, um, the jumpers prices come with the shipping. So if you deduct the shipping out of my triple spike, it's really not um, overly high. Are you on our VIP group? No. Okay. But I'd like to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this section is close. But you, you, can, you can stay on if you like, sir. I don't want to just be rude. But usually it's close. Um, yeah, our VIP is on Facebook. We have a podcast every Saturday. Cool. Thanks. And the variegated is very rare. There's not very many filling up that are variegated. Yeah, a variegated leaf. This variegated is rare, and let alone the flower is actually pretty. Before this, I think it was Yes, uh, yeah, and the, actually the f the flower is quite beautiful for a, a lot of. Any, they better get them because they probably be another couple of years before they're back. Uh, yeah, or unless we just have something in secret, we're not going to disclose. <laughs> you know, commercial people, we always have things on the pipeline that we're not going to tell you, but voila, there it is. But yeah, see how the variegation all different. Like I love this variegation. And Roger, you can shoot the crop. It's all consistent. Hold it up to a, a regular Helenopsis so they can see. Some people are new and they don't know what you're talking about. Okay. When I say variegated, just meaning the leaf structure is has variegation versus all straight green. And on this one, it's actually kind of brown. People are going to say, "Is this plant sick?" No, it's probably the the color of the plant, the parentage. It will sometimes give you this kind of color and the leaf structure. 
underneath is actually this probably is a sunset color or you know brownish color so sometimes the leaf foliage will take on that parentage will be this color it is not sunburn so whenever you get a plant that's not what unusual please don't freak out just kind of relax for a minute and ask questions versus start posting that I got a you know sunburn plant from Normans and whatsoever just we would have to teach you guys to understand just like Norman has to be patient to teach me you know I'll be like what's wrong with this leaf <laughs> So yeah, here are the variegation, and sometimes my okay, sorry, because I was trying to show two plants. See, when I do my triples. Or when my my jumper goes out, Wendy, you see you have your triple, and I only got one triple out of the, the whole batch. See see the the plant size. My triple is at least six months older than your one. You're asking why am I paying more on this one? But literally, when I picked a jumper, they bloom three spike for a reason. They're older, so it's not like I feel like just charge more. The plant size that you can see is a lot bigger. Then if you're paying 35, so I want to use this plant as an example. Sometimes I don't do it because I want to charge you more. The plant is six months more or more. So if you're paying 35, by the time you add on 15, 18 dollars for your shipping charge, you're already at that, you know, 35 plus, you know, it's 50. And if you add another spec, it's 60. So I charge you 68. You could tell I'm not really making a lot of money. It's just to be able to showcase and give the people on the jumper a bigger plant. This will just show you that it is a bit bigger plant. Yeah, people, it's like you just feel like charging whatever. But there's always justification. It's not like I could just go, we're a business that's been here for 30 years. We can't just, you know, do monkey business, you know. Nobody will follow us. Anyway, so this is what I clean up for Jamie's jumper table. Signs are coming up next week. Jamie's jumper section, do not touch. So it, it, we'll go to that plan when we get there. So be careful, don't trip. Ooh, look at this one. So since we're here, we'll explain a little bit what is an NF number and what is an MC number. Uh, NF numbers are ceilings. Ceilings meaning we don't know what it's going to look like until it's bloom, right? Versus Mariclone, it's going to look exactly like what they show you on the picture. So this is all the same number. And look at the variation and the color and the pattern. So without the NF, the ceiling pool, we will not be able to find one good one to do a Mariclone for you. So you were asking me why my jumpers are different because I go through a pool of 50 plants, pull out the best one and sell it to you. Then you don't have to, you know, actually even flower 10 plants that even may not even bloom the one I picked for you. So just explain what the NF number, you see the different variation. We have retail next door, so. See, every one of them is different. You see the color? This is NF2623. I actually all like all three color. If I didn't know they're the same one, I kind of like them all. They're all very different. I don't think there is one I hate. So that's how I pick jumpers. I will go through an NF number and pick what I think is exceptional color, size, and obviously the root system has to be there. And then before I send it out, I obviously clean out the roots, re-spike the plant. Jumpers takes extra beauty cleaning up to do. Hey, Wendy, can you let Norman know I'm going to be done as he get ready? Thank you. Because I can't cross 
the director and the cameraman to get to Norman. So here we are, look at this. A two planter. I, now I hunt for two plants. Then I will wait, hopefully, but I probably won't be able to wait till this, the second plant is, oh wait, I lied. Oh wait, don't let me touch that. So this is two planter. Without me breaking this, I do have my days. Tuesday, I broke two spikes. See, this is a two planter and it actually bloomed pretty similar. I can't see it, guys. Is this similar? Right? Almost identical, right? So, two plants. Sometimes I get two plants that bloom really totally different color. So, this is the two planter. If you guys have a friend close, you know, buy the two planter and share it. <laughs> then you guys could have. A plant each. When you buy a two planter, it's cheaper than buying a one planter. Anyways, that's just a suggestion. See the difference in the color? These are ceilings. Norman is sitting there watching you, baby. Oh, so he's ready. <laughs> so you see the difference in color? This is the beauty of the NF number. I actually love this crop. The leaf is nice and round. And I'm starting to get my blues now. And there's 50-50, one of each. 50-50, one of each? Okay, we'll go there. I'm totally in love with the indigos. What's the number on those? Oh, you don't I, I, this is what the jumper is. Now, we have secret numbers. Now I have to go write numbers down. Um, there's no numbers on, is that Jeff? Yeah, not everything in here, not everything in here has number. Um, this is what, 50-50? Somebody, somebody asked what that was. Somebody posted, same tag but two different flower. Um, before they freaked out, I said, it's supposed to be like that, 50-50. You never know what you're gonna get. Lycasty shape versus a flat pyrrolic. Here, here is a right mustache, see? These are the right mustache. Are we good? Anyways, let me just wrap it up real quick. Woo! I could never walk down the aisle and say real quick because I see and stop and look at this. This is another Hanover Passion with Violacia Indigo. Two planter, two different color. I love it. If I live in a condo and I want to have two plants, but this will satisfy my urge to have multiple plants and what I could afford to put, I buy a two planter. <laughs> Hand over. Look at that amazing red. And here's the swamp cooler. Let me just finish really quickly so we can give you guys back to Norman. Wendy, you want to come this way or go that way? Whichever. Yeah, because I'm going to close you up. <laughs> Remember the one aisle problem? <laughs> You're in. See how fast that easy that bench roll. Oh, it, yeah, it's because you ride by the swamp cooler. Roger, we never picked one of these last week with all that excitement of the, uh, remember this last week? We, I think we got muted as my butt was uh, going to work. Cord is on the floor, yeah. So this one is MC962, MC962. And we need one of these at home. You should see this in the natural need light. One. I need one. I oh want my one. Gosh, you don't, I, mean, you I don't have enough at you're home. Low. You uh, need one. It's like paper towels. You need I need. Towels. I need to be stocked on my toilet paper, <laughs> just in case. I need one. We need one, Roger. So can you can you come by and pick one up later? While I'm busy, I gotta finish my jumpers. Okay, this is where we left off last week. That was the most interesting for everybody. Look what, look what the toothpick sex eared. 
these are all seed pod carrying seeds and I can't show you what we bred with um, this house is not open so we actually put the cross name on it versus just a number a secret number um, what has been bred with has actually been written so I guess this is a very fertile person <laughs> everyone took look everyone is caring but now we're gonna have to watch it before it burst um, and then send it back to our lab so every one of them has a tag on it as I'm gonna pick these up the tags I picked up are the one that didn't quite make it you know had a lot of fun but it was it didn't take so this one obviously we didn't watch it burst or it wasn't that healthy anyways so these tags are the one that did not take all of our hard work just went down the tube so growing orchid is fun but it's costly very time consuming um, so there's people in the back greenhouse working <laughs> that's where the sound is so a lot of them are carrying seed pods sounds like a car oh last week we were having lunch it was a big bloom it was an explosion in ontario we were fireworks. just sitting there was was it fireworks, a fireworks place went up. oh no way is that what it was man it sounded like a big bloom it wasn't even like a gun but anyway see this has been bred so the flowers will fold up sometimes you'll see your flower somehow at home carry a seed pot it's not like you went to do toothpick sex somehow it's just you know air got just blow the seed called pollen in it so the flowers will fold just like this they don't fade like a natural way to fade and then if it takes so you see it started getting swollen already see this part I'll put my finger there so you can see so it's taking and sometime when they're carrying seed pod the flower changes color is really kind of beautiful it's like a woman getting pregnant um, see that's take see this this is what a seed pod looks like right oh it's some car so this is a pretty fertile guy so hopefully oh Ooh, this is a very interesting cross. We'll cross our fingers. Um, see such a small plant is to mature already to carry some seed pod. Got to find a good plant that's healthy to do breeding with before you bred it to death. Carry the last seed pod and the plant died. Um, this one has got some coffee in it, so that's very interesting. So anyway, so now you see how we, Norman and I show you how to do breeding already on one of the pop pre-show so these are the fruit of our labor it's actually sea pods and this is only one section of our, our house that we we do our breeding plant oh she's getting antsy so we have other houses that you know what is this Trudiana's or Sheriana I'm not sure but anyway so the last time we had uh, Roger Lee and Jamie Fang AM AOS Norman thought it was kind of cute to breed both of us together so we'll get to see what our offspring look like and ironically he did a crossbreed so no, Roger of course is not going to get pregnant so he didn't carry any seed pot of course I am so we'll see how that goes and this is what I tried to show you last week this is all of our hard work that did not take so we'll literally have to take down what did what you cross with did not take and you don't want to waste a good pollen on something that you know it didn't work but it may just not work because of that plant one plant you dealt with but the chances is greater if you have some kind of educational guess that um, and then like this one we didn't watch it sort of burst so obviously with this is wasted then Norman had to be careful on these, right? And they all, we always obviously put down the date. This is September 19. So how many months is that? Almost Six seven. months, yeah, almost seven months. So see, 
we have to be real careful. See how it, the color still stays on the flower? Look at that. Can you see? That's hidden. Sorry, I won't move. See the flower? The flowers stay intact. The seed pod's growing. So here is the fruit of our labor. Oh Lord, I think we got some young, young dragonfly here. That's the seed pod. That's the seed pod, I didn't even realize. Young, young, second offspring's coming up. This will be the third. That's exciting. In four or five years. In four or five years, but the second is ready soon. So now I gotta come and spike this. So the one that Norman stole from me and right under my house in my house, when he stayed with me, he took two dragonflies. So I better see it on this bench. <laughs> And he just told me he's going to come stay at my house again next week. I said, only on one condition, you don't take any plant with you. Make sure you don't take a seed pot with you. <laughs> well, anyways, we're going to end the tour today because I just apologize that I muted myself for you guys last week at the most important section of the introducing the seed pot. But now you see we do have a lot of work cut out for us, you know. Spring is coming up. Wendy, if you want to come and help pull weeds, you're more than welcome. <laughs> right? You know, we don't spray a lot of chemicals, so we get weeds. If you get weeds at home, be thankful that we don't spray so much chemicals so you can't keep up. You know, okay. most people spray so much to suppress it, but by the time it gets to your house, you don't spray a chemical, and then all the diseases will come up. Oh, yeah, here's what I was saying. That's the one we saw over there that I was watching for my jumper. So we only have eight of these or nine of these available for the jumpers. Perfect pirogue. Have a good Sunday, guys. Tomorrow, we'll see you on the jumpers. And for people who don't know the jumpers, I keep having questions. Jumpers starts at um, 10 a.m. Pacific time every five minutes on the group page. There'll be a a jumper come up. First person who wrote soul, that plants belong to you. If we only have one and you really like it, just put a second or third soul. Um, the chances of me finding another one is great, but. Okay, so somebody's playing with cars back there. All right, um, Norman Fang, we need you. I'm done. The second part of the podcast. Me? Oh. Here you go. Your mic. That's a check into your alba. I know, but just to see how fertile it is. Every one of take. I know. That jack into your alba. Everyone. We were chatting. Can you hear you? The one that Jamie uh, show that had four C pot. That's actually a piano enough to jack into your alba. So we're very excited. Uh, that session was just part of uh, my my breeding bench. Uh, I have another session in the back but it's not available for tour yet because there's no wi-fi back there and that's where all the really nice good stuff is there so maybe maybe they can work on the wi-fi in the back are we on mm -hmm. what is that noisy in the back are they working on the Wii or something oh the our neighbor Well, I hope you have a nice tour with Jamie.
today. Uh, some of the C part that Jamie show you, uh, there's one that actually is calling Surrey, even though it's both six months, that is a novelty C part. Uh, uh, in typical U fan analysis, uh, like a marvelous type, uh, take about four to five months, a uh, little longer in the winter time because the weather is cooler. In the summertime, uh, the regular big fan analysis, you take about four months. Uh, but the novelty fan analysis with Bernina and Valencia, it can take up to minimum eight months to uh, to ten months. So, and it's always tricky. And the novelty sometimes there's one that see part that is kind of have it's open have cotton dye, uh, this empty. So even though sometimes we have a C part is take, it doesn't guarantee you're gonna have it's, it's gonna be full. Uh, so I'm in. Right about the summertime, I will do a, a, a podcast um, just on the breeding. Uh, I call it pre uh, pregnant parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> and I do a lot of research uh, from the past experience before we actually do the 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 uh, the, uh, the C because a lot of time that when the, when you do the C part, uh, it's a just like raising a kid. It's a big responsibility. Sometimes the C part may have up to hundred thousand. And though we don't, we don't, we don't want to make any hybrids been done before. If we remake any hybrid, we'll be make, remaking with something superior and newer. And so I'm gonna kind of carry into today's topic. Uh, my name is Norman Fong, and, and thank you for joining this uh, 48 podcast. Jeff talks to remind me. Uh, this podcast today is one of my uh, people so oh, off of that is, is white. But actually, this is very, very important. Uh, I, I'm a few person in the United States actually knew exactly the, all the, the breeding trend on the center white fan analysis. And all started with Alphabetus and Amabilis. And many of you know I was born in I'm MIT, I'm made in Taiwan. I was born in Taiwan and I come here when I was 16 years old. And so when I was a kid, uh, I think my first orchid fan analysis was when I was 10, 12 years old. And it was a mob, uh, it was used to call Amabilis Alphabetus, uh, Amabilis for variety Formosana. Formosana mean Taiwan. And, but now it's been reclassified as a Alphabetus variety Formosana. And I'm very pleased to show you, it just happened that this is the new stamp prop I received uh, from a good friend of mine. This is a true genetic wild species of Alphabetus variety Formosana. And what's really unique versus some of the um, Amabra Formosana is how miniature form the leaf is. And this is a, uh, so this, I'm gonna be busy uh, making crosses with uh, that Equestris, uh, Sturidariana, because there's a very, uh, those of you been listen to my, my talk on the new color form of Fernanosa species, it's very important that we, for breeder, to have access to the really natural wild species because a lot of the species here in the United States is a lot of the what we call inbreed species. So uh, there's a very uh, good merit for this wild species because they have a lot of disease resistance. They, they are, they uh, being in the wild. And this species is from Taitung on the East Coast Island. And it is known the temperature can drop down to 48 degrees at night for about a couple of weeks uh, because that's, that's the east side of the island and that's where usually the, where the hurricane come in the middle of summer. So uh, Rogers, when I usually, when I saw the, show the leaf, you can um, uh, focus on the flower. Uh, so this is, this is kind of neat, it just happened this week. So this is the first time people have seen this anywhere outside Taiwan. So I'm, this is kind of excited, a miniature form of Alphabetus. So this will be a good, merit uh, for very exciting for me to breed some miniature form okay now i want to okay you can go back uh, i want to show you this uh the uh 
This is Amabarus, of Atiris. Isashu is a, is, this is a, what we call a lime breeding. Uh, we have a neighbor who have a, a chop house. <laughs> They're fixing car. And I should have bought a house. <laughs> anyway, uh, but this is the a different. See, this is lime breed and this is tetrapoil, 4N, okay? And this is Alphatitis, uh, Alphatitis variety for, Formosa. I, Roger, can you do a close up on this lip here? You see the lip, the striping in the lip? Yeah, okay. Just focus this is on the, the this one here. Uh, this is the uh, characteristic of the Alphatitis Formosa here. Okay, the, look at how very uniform the, the, the stripe here. Uh, and they're very important on either Alphatitis or Amabilis, uh in the breeding because this is where the back background is. So I'm going to show you, can we show the, the distance shot here? Okay. I'm going to show you some more, more unusual uh, one. Uh, most of us do not grow the Amabilis variety Grandiflora from, from Philippines as much anymore uh, because the because the, the, that is the green flower from from Philippines is the one that has the biggest flower. So they can up naturally, they can be up to four flower four four inches in size. But they also come with very big leaf and very dark leaf. So uh, and I do not have that in my collection anymore. So I I need to I need to gain uh, I need to um, uh, get that in my collection again. But the trap then. Most of my collection right now on the Amabilis and Alphatidae is concentrated on the newer version uh, because there's some jungle or island that we have access because they're cutting down the tree for oil palm or durian, tropical fruit. So this stuff, I'm going to show you a couple of the really exciting now. One of them is this one here. This is Amabilis from Java. And this is a very exciting bit. Uh, it's very new. Well, we're the first one to introduce to United States. And I'm very pleased with the print. It's nice dark green leaf, okay? No pigmentation in the back, okay? And I just love the yellow lip here. You see the, Roger, can you see this? Okay, so this is very important on, on this so this form here because the re there is a very careful breeding program and when you show this now with this yellow cast you can have breed this is actually a marvelous from oh, this form crossed with standard white so this is called internal snow and well I, I'm, I do not have this available because I sold out the last batch but we will have this again pretty soon. But this is the important of, we do not have this species, this color form 50 years ago. So this is why it's so important to have, this is what a lot of people say, oh, what's new? You know, what's, all phenomenops is the same. No, because all phenomenops are the different. You know, the, the phenomenops I offer here is totally different from the Trader Joe, okay? Uh, it's the, the, the way that we grow is totally different. and. So this is, the, this is very exciting. So imagine uh, there are some, one of my friends, uh, Ovio, has been doing a tremendous breeding with a yellow lip onto a miniature. So I was trying to get some of the commission to get into his variety of the crown. And we try, we try to get an exclusive right to introduce to the United States. And when I get exclusive right, because he worked for the government agent research station, so we, when we get the, the exclusive right, I can dictate that I only want to maybe crown maybe three, four hundred print at the time, versus that if somebody get it before I do, they might want to, it, they can mass produce it, and the trouble is when they mass produce it, they usually will, will kind of ruin the print. You know, they get a mutation, you know, all kind of problem, and this is why I want to do for my customer, for you. We want to do quality versus quantity or 
cheaper price. Um, but we're still a com uh, very competitive price for, for to offer to you. So, and this is a good example of Aphrodite's with the low BI. I so, you know, Q, so okay. So this, is, uh, and this one here, we have this. This is the one that for Mozart's dream is made in Taiwan. And this is used in Taiwanese uh, Aphrodite's for Mozart onto low BI. And isn't how cute? It had the, the size of low BI. So this is why the, the species is fun. So Alpha, a marble from Alaska is probably the most used uh, breeding in the world right now because it's, it's so compact. That might be one of the smallest Yeah, the, for the hybrid, because right here, Roger, can you see this? We had a crown and you can have a, li <laughs> you can have a living wall. <laughs> and they are mature size for most of dream they are if this is perfect for under light for most of this is 1.25 this is what i call the, the wearable orchid okay you wearable orchid and they the best part is oh by the way uh my my, my cakey paste two in one cakey paste is coming in uh uh i'm remaking them I only do this once a year, so when I offer them, stock up. Okay, it's good for, because I can put cakey paste here, and this plant, because low BI, they're very easy to get cakey. Okay, so now later on, I'll do this a table way, you can actually separate them, because this now is long enough. I can separate them, so I will do this uh, tip of the week later, okay? So, you know the cute? The, is, this is 50%. Alpha that is for Mosana, for Mosana. Okay. But the but the, the size of the plant and the flower is dominated by the the, the, the species low BI. Okay, so we'll do this later. Are those pregnant ones? Unfortunately not. Uh, not, not. not this one here. Well most of the um, uh, most of the Aphrodites and Amabodus are not fragrance. So another one I wanna uh, show you. This is why I need an assistant in the back. <laughs> okay, this is another one, very excited, new one, okay? And again, uh, I was able to get C from my friend in Indonesia. And this is a marvelous variety from, from Surabaya. One of the islands, uh, I never been to Indonesia, but I, I was, I know Indonesia have thousands of islands. So you have, that's why different islands, like they have this, this kind of isolation. So they have different strength. Uh, it's very different than the samba, but this strength from this island, notice, is half of the size. And because they're from sea, uh, the first one flower is white. They can be pink. The flower as the flower age, this is gonna have brush pink on there. So it's really pretty. Even if you look at the back of the flower, you can see some of the, the the pink brush on that, okay. And another nice thing about this kind of species, Roger, can you see it shows here? They are sequential flower, very different than the the Grandiflora from 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 for the Philippine, the Sumatrana, uh, the Samba, and this. This is the same spike from last year. I might get a new spike this year, but this can, they are going again. So they're sequential flower. It's very, very unusual for a For this, most of most of this type is not sequential flower. Okay. So all these two are. I still have some seeding available. Okay. Then. So this is the actually the line breeding of the four N. Uh, Amabilis, or Aphrodite for Mosana. And I think Bio Zimmer have a crown too. Yeah, this is a, a, a crown by a uh, variety called Ben Yu. Uh, got a award of AMAOS. Uh, in line breeding, when they keep breeding and breeding, they breed for the size, but they still, I love this crown because they still retain the compactness and also the J green uh, leaf on them. And it's a tetrapoid that you, you don't need to spike them. The, the 
the plane present well by itself. Okay. And this is this is the this is the crown. This, oops. This is happened on the younger plane. Very pretty. Okay. So this is Aphrodite. So what happened? Remember the story, Diana, that we shown before. When you cross a marvelous. The wild, the, the two M form, and we stood there, Rihanna, and you have something like Tiffany Christopher, and this is why a lot of time, uh, a lot of the miniature phenomenon, the Tiffany Christopher, you can tell the leaf have a marble form of sana. This is the, the this is the characteristic of the leaf. Uh, in college, we used to have a print ID. Sometimes the professor would, could give you a leaf, and you had to know the species, or uh -huh. guess what species might be in there. So this, look at the leaf color, okay. It's a giveaway, it had to have a, a marble form of sauna in there. And it also had the, uh, the steward in Rihanna in the background. And also they have equestrian alba, remember the tiny equestrian in there. So this is kind of fun for the, so this is why it's so important to know your species, okay. And the, Next one here, I want to, I want to show you this one here. This is this is my pride and joy of the Amabilis from Java. Okay, so there's a nice story on this. Okay, this plant here back here. I'm gonna pull this. Oh, okay. About 10 years ago, I have a chance to acquire some seeding. Okay, and from Mr. Huang, from, from Mr. Huang from uh, Taiwan, he's my good friend, and he's the vice chair of the judging chair of Taiwan. And you know, he said, well, normally he, he, he have this, uh, a friend of his have a, 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 a strand of a marvelous, never seen before. And what the sea part, the capture was collected from a, a island of the Java or New Guinea area. And which is, I said, wow, I never heard of New Guinea, the Java island, which is like off the Australia, have a marvelous there. I said, yes, I want it. And because what happened is that now we know because that sea part was sent to Thailand because they do not have the facility or aseptic or tissue culture media. So the lab saw it and then Mr. Huang just uh, he bought all of them and he said, Norman, I want you to try this. This is about 10 years ago. He said, I, want you, I want to give this a try in North America so see how they grow in, in California. I said, sure. So this is one of the sea original plants. I, I grow about 100 plants. And this small, but again, I also notice the sequential flower because in California, in North America, our weather is warmer than New Guinea, where it's hot all the time. And so I, right away, I, I report to Mr. Huang. I said, this is what I found. Uh, they are very good grower. Uh, and they, he know I don't spray hardcore fungicide here. And I say, under my treatment here, they're very disease resistant, okay. And, and, they and then they are sequential flower. He said, wow, this, they are not sequential flower in Asia because they, they have warmer day and warmer not die, night. So he said, oh, that's good to know. Uh, and I also noticed that they actually behave like novelty phenomenopsis. Look at this, uh, they, they can be, have secondary spike, and then the second spike will keep blooming. And then, when the new season comes, you have a new spike coming for the new season. And one thing I notice out of this population is, you know how I am, when I go to, I live at the property here now, when I cannot sleep at night, 
oh, I usually usually the last person to leave the nursery. I go to I go to nursery. I go to the the greenhouse at night. You know, sometimes to check and make sure there's no snail or that kind of problem. And then one of the greenhouse I walk in is this house. We have a hundred plant. And I say, what is that smell? It smells like jasmine. At night, I said, there's no way. I said, before this, there's no, I said, maybe, maybe a caralia, maybe a dipiana. A car first of all, dipiana is in flower, but dipiana doesn't have the, the, the sense. And they don't, they don't have, they don't have uh, the, the fragrance, or dip, uh, they don't have fragrance at night also. And it's not the season for and great and super dialia, you know, the, the Darwin orchid, that have the night fragrant orchid, uh, and nano dosa. The then so I start looking for looking where it is. So it draw me to this batch of hundred plant of this. And this one I I identify about four or five plant. Uh, that population of the seeding have fragrance. So I was able to then I what I did is go through all kind of criteria and the flower shape, the leaf color. So that's why I identified this plant. And I released it last summer for the first time. And I call it a marvelous, it is a marvelous from Iron Java. The corner name is called 24 Hours Fragrance Princess. And even better than the original plant, this is what the fun when you pop, how you, when you're able to grow a population of seeding. The job, the 24 hour finish, 20 hour, not 20 hour finish, <laughs> 20 hour fragrant princess has the, what I call the silver leaf. The, this is the only one. Uh, there's more, but four have fragrant, but this is the only one had the prettiest leaf versus some of them had just solid leaf. But this one here, even without flower, it has a beautiful kind of silver-ish covers on them. And the only thing negative part about this one here is very tall spike. They are, that's genetic. Uh, I cannot do anything to it, but I'm trying to breed this 24 hour fitness. <laughs> <laughs> this is a <the> barber. <laughs> 24 hour fragrant princess uh, onto maybe uh, other fragrant flower that like banana, alba. So I'm gonna be busy. So you guys gonna go uh, have a fun with me. We're gonna care, we're gonna see the next four or five years when there's flowers to see what happened. But this is very important because uh, not only the, this is the only white phenomena, white uh, aphrodites or um, uh, marvelous have fragrance, but majority of the fragrant phenomena are only during the day only. And the trouble is during the day we work so what happened is, and this is now I can, I finally have somebody to answer to one of my clients that purchased a uh, banana. Uh, and I, the discussion say this is fragrant. Uh, and she's, and then she's frowning and she write me a nasty email. You lied to me. It did not have fragrance. I said, yes, it's have fragrance. Well, not when I go home. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's true. She go home, she worked during the day. By the time you, she go home at night, Bernina and, and Valencia does not have fragrance at night. Okay, so now I had to change my discussion. Only during the day. <laughs> so now this is something that we can actually have an answer. We have a gene now uh, that we can say have fragrance and 24 hours. And the stronger the day, stronger the fragrance, the more fragrance. And then at night, it's, it's just very delightful. Can, so can you imagine at night, you have one of this, and very pastel, and jasmine fragrant at night for you when you get home, 24 hours. And so this is very exciting, and I, so I'm, I'm, sh I'm so excited to share this with you because this is my original work. Look at this silver leaf. And the, if, you, if a flower stem is too tall for you, for under light, you know what? Do a topiary. The, the stem is very, the, the stem is very soft, okay? So uh, next time I, I can uh, issue you have to do a, 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 a topiary. And maybe you can have fun with it or do a spiral. When, when the spiral side is coming out, you can do a spiral. 
and QR to keep it on the light and for Windows still but but you can see the difference this is from the original Django C strand and versus the the Chrome and when we do something in the Chrome uh, it had to be the perfect to do to make all the investment and the time for it and what happened when you cross with Amabilis, Formosara, and Shuriana? You get you have two forms of Shuriana. Okay, this is the regular Shuriana from Philippines, and this is the uh, the silver leaf, the darker form. So, depend on the uh, uh, you got phenolopsis. It's called Rothschild Darianum, and I can tell by this is using the 4N, the tetraport form of Amalva Formosana. So you get the flowers, it's bigger in form, but it still had that branching havoc from Shuriana. Okay, so this is just to show you, uh, the, this is what would the, the primary hybrid looks like. So this is uh, called, this is actually a remake of Rothschild Darianum. And from here, we can make even more hybrid or miniature and hopefully have fragrance on them. Okay. So, so this is how, so because of all the breeding, we are big standard white. So the, the, the Phenonopsis, the big Phenonopsis are using the uh, uh, Amava uh, Sandariana and and also the Guindiflora from, from Philippines over the for a course of 30 to 40 years. 40 year they've done a lot of work in France and also in California because kind of we want to use it for cut flower. So in the lime breeding, that's why you have this uh, the big standard flower. So over the course of the year, then you can actually, you can tell the, th the color leaf, it does not have alphabetis, a marble, the formosana strain, but anytime you have a deep forest green, they all have a lot of Philippine species, uh, uh, a marble, the guendiflora from. So guendiflora from always give you a very dark green leaf. Okay, so this is why sometimes uh, we have, when we send people order Phenonopsis hybrid and like Bonina of Valencia and they call and write emails to say hey you send me something in the flower too. it's sick because it look, they, they like green the J green so people always think about everything had to be like the, the, the white so this so I want to let everybody know even among the white there are different color forms on the foliage so if it if it if it did not come out as a as a deep forest green, that's okay. We we should we should celebrate the diversity of different color form of, of the flower and also the foliage. Okay. So I want to show you this one here because this is so this is how we how we come across now. Uh, I'm still do I'm still doing some breeding with standard white, believe it or not, because people so normally what are you doing that for? You know, white is a white. I said no, white is uh, uh, standard white is uh, the, the bread and butter of my business because when I first started the business in '86, uh, my the best advice for me is always do white, and that's true because standard white uh, never go out of fashion because in interior design, the pure white color go with any color and also because where I am in Mount Curry, California we have a lot of smart problem here in fact remember in the 80 uh, so it, what happened with, with my the breeding program here is anything I breed had to be smart resistant what that mean is when the, the plant the flower are more smart resistant they have a heavier flower substance and diamond dust texture so in turn, they're gonna last a lot longer for you. So my white, is, we're known for our white because they go into these people's houses. Uh, they will last two, three months. And in Orange County, where the day temperature is cooler, 
they just keep booming for six months. And so this is the something I'm, I'm working on. Uh, and one of the, the things people always ask me, because this was kind of sad because the way the, the orchid business, because the the mass, mass producer used Santa as a as a, as a, a price lo loser to get people into the store to buy. Because that's why you trade the Joe's really is inexpensive. But they, they actually now there's only two categories of fan analysis or orchid period to go into the supermarket. The those one with only twelve inches and the the biggest boxes that can be in is twenty six inches. So anything between that, taller than that or shorter than that, they scratch off the production. And that's really sad because there's lots of nice stuff. Or when they have the white they they tend to try to bend bend the flower or they manipulate with grow hormone, try to keep it artificially short, or they try to dye the color, do some kind of crazy stuff. So my my perspective always do it by breeding. We try not to manipulate what nature already give it us for. So this is my newest hybrid of the white. Okay, look at this. And you can actually get them uh, in right now. Genetically, Look at, this is uh, this is what a good breeding. Not all the white is the same, okay? This all they all cheaper ones. See here, naturally branching. Of course, we got the they got the the luxury of uh, Norman Zorkit and Mega Dry. Avi side branches take. You see here, and I can even break this up. I call it. You can know, it take out, it always take out the foreskin. We we show you on that on the oncidium. So that way, once you take out this skin, instead of 45 degree, this will be more branching. So if I have a time before, and I physically to do that, and that's a, that's the trick. If you do take out the the the, the skin here, and earlier, it didn't go this way and it will become a Christmas tree like. Uh, but, so this is a wonderful, wonderful hybrid. It's from, bred from Norman Smith. Can we see the Norman Smith here? Can I keep it? Yeah. Okay, this is the, this is one of the parents. This is my, my best Norman Smith. Look at the size of flower. Okay, okay. So it's gonna be, uh, and I register as an American dream and the, and very, it's an improvement. I feel it's an improvement. I haven't seen the flower yet. Uh, hopefully it will be big, but it's, it's an improvement because it has beautiful side branches. So this is perfect for, for, uh, for you to do this at home. Uh, it's actually short enough, you can actually perfect for industrial, but look how strong. I don't even, you don't even need to stack them until later. Uh, good naturally branching habit and gonna carry on a lot. So. This is why it's so uh, is uh, I call this uh, orchid breeding is a planet parenthood, you know, garbage in, garbage out, and it's all about the breeding and the genetic. And if you want to grow something for your house, for the for your hobby, you might want to grow something that is is unique and important. And also, I also see a lot of people on on the Facebook that people like to rescue plant, friend when when these are. Uh, Garden Chef had this discount clearance. Uh, please do not do it. Okay, uh, if they found the uh, uh, there's a post I saw from Walmart <laughs> that somebody saw a Walmart and they were actually leave it out outside at the garden center and everything is freeze yellow. I don't care uh, unless you just want to pay for the container, but please do not rescue you there's not in the, you can rescue every orchid in the, the box store you're going to bring in more this pest and disease into your collection and it's going to cost you more to do that so please uh listen to me if you are just beginning the your collection do not rescue plant uh, uh is the sometimes it's better uh if it's so bad it's it's going to take you twice as much of energy and the space to do that. And one of the best advice somebody gave it to me uh, on the greenhouse management, 
uh, not related to orchid, but also everything else. He said, Norman, you are going to stop making money if you are uh, willing to give up and dump your plant. Because when plant are pests that have, have some kind of pest damage or disease damage, you're going to take out your space. Okay? Uh, think about you that in real estate. That space is going to cost me everything here is hang water. You can, everybody hang water their plant at home. Hang water, potty media, the heating cost and the cooling cost. And that space, you might, you need to grow something that is profitable or for you will be enjoyable. Rather trying to rescue the plant and have the potential of the plant contaminate of your collection. So that's the message I have for you today. And uh, I think if you never, if you like fragrant flower, uh, give this a try. Uh, you're gonna enjoy this. Uh, uh, this about well, almost 10 years of my work, and I think it's, it's something that's very unique. And I I hope you, you can uh, share this with you. And and if you got it, uh, some people already have this from last summer. Uh, I think Linda Earl has it. Uh, make a comment. And I think this is a, could be a, a phenomenal species. And we're gonna build from this species uh, to cross with other uh, fragrant one. Uh, for example. This is a uh, Shuriana, and Wendy, I want to give you a pressure to smell this. I just noticed that earlier today, about ten o'clock, it's really crowded. Uh, this had you not only had unique flower shape, color form of Shuriana, but the, the flowers fragrance is so different. So, Wendy, tell us about the the, the fragrance when you smell it. It's almost. That's really nice. It smells like Catalina, right? Yeah. It's totally different. Okay, so this is all from the the same population C strain of Shuriana. And again, I'm I'm so excited. Uh, this is again a a, a C pot. Somebody. Uh, a friend of mine in, uh, I think in Philippines, but it's from a different island that is Philippines closer to uh, Malaysia. So this, we, are, we might onto something new, air, new color form of Juliana, that orange color form. And the fragrance is even stronger. So uh, obviously in that island, where they, orig where they come from, we don't know which, which island they come from, they had to have a stronger fragrant in order to, in, to attract the pollinator, the insect, okay? So I'm gonna uh, come tonight at one o'clock. The, the fr night fragrant only come on after 12 o'clock. Don't ask me why, but that's how it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I will come out at night at one o'clock and in order to see the, the 24 hours, yes, I did that. Yeah, that uh, one hour, one, 1 p.m., 1 a.m., 2 p.m., 2 a.m. You document, and I, that's why I can tell you this is 24-hour fitness. 24-hour <laughs> fitness again. <laughs> I need to buy stock hey, in that company. Yes. Okay. So that's conclude today. Oh, then we're gonna go. Let's we're gonna go into uh, do a break for tip of the week. Yeah. We do tip of the week right now. Okay. Good. Remember two weeks ago, this one here have flower spike from the center crown, right? And I told, in, in the past, people always thought, oh, when the, the orchid flower from the center crown, that is, that is a dead end. No, not true. Uh, some of the genetic, maybe uh, Doritis, Porcherima, uh, they always had this terminal, the flower, which means the flower spike spiking the flower, Fall from the center, and I, I cut it, right, and I, I think I put some fison in there, and after that I spray mega dry, and I told you it's going to get a cakey, right, vegetarian cakey, voila, see this, this is not going to be a spike, but should be probably a, a cakey coming up.
Okay, so uh, if you have a plant, a federal officer that do this, what we call terminal flower spike, don't give up on them because that's just, that's just the physiology of the plant. Uh, Sometimes uh, in, in tissue culture, because may, maybe, uh, remember, remember Dolly the sheep? When, when the first uh, GMO embryo culture, that they took the embryo from the old adult plant. So what happened is in tissue culture, this is why I do what I do. I do a limited number. But we don't want to build a number. Each, if I want to build one, I go to the new spike. Sometimes when the, the this is a, a prong, uh, it's done by another company. When they, t in the tissue culture, they just keep dividing and dividing and dividing. And mother stock been there for what? Ages, for two or three years. They should have gone to the, to the next year to harvest the new spike. Because the spike, then the plant, the physiology of the, the cell will be more younger versus they keep doing the mother stock can dividing and dividing and they, they the physiology of the cell or the the plant become old so maybe too much information okay so that's the table of the week today and i'm gonna break and we will we will continue for the uh show and tell okay so i'm gonna uh, continue on the show and tell uh, first of all, the show and tell today, everybody need to have this one here. Okay, the, the 24 hour fragrant princess, not fitness. <laughs> okay, and uh, you really gonna enjoy the, the, the fragrance. And I think by this week, I have less than 24 print. Uh, this is the last chance if you are, if you, if you want a, a silver leaf, the dark color form, get it now because uh, once it's sold out is is not going to be in your wish list basket okay and okay well, we, we got this already this is the new hybrid the new Amabilis okay oh and this Dendrovium I think it's from Indonesia, very close to New Guinea. This is a very charming uh, in dendrobium species. Uh, and this is from C, the miniature. And they're very good for if you go in, in, in the, the, the uh, orchid case or under light. And it's, well, that calorie are there, that kind of uh, uh, subtropical. So if you have calorie, uh, this is wonderful for you. This one I showed last week, but it was in bud, so people want me to show again when they flower. This is the, one of the, the cute dendrobium from uh, Southeast Asia, and I believe it's uh, uh, New Guinea area. And they, they, they always bloom flower, the old spike. You see here? So all, this is a wonderful plant from C, and this is about five years old, so get this now, because you're gonna enjoy the plant with so many a uh, spike coming from everywhere. So very, very unique. It's a dendrobium symbol grossum. Okay. Wonderful. And also have fragrance. And oh uh we almost if you have uh this is the dendro uh Sinoche Taiwan Gold orange one. The leaves just drop, and this is gonna have a new spike coming up. So I think I'm down to about six or eight of them. So get this one now uh, before they all gone. Okay, and Lycasty. This is a miniature Lycasty. It's called uh, Lycasty Pixie. And this is what makeup right does. We spray the foliage, let it uh, keep the plant dry. And this is first broom from one spike, just one bowl. So they're gonna have all these flowers, a yellow flower, and then when the flower finish, they're gonna have a leaf. So I, I will go, I will do a, a segment on lacasty in about a month. Okay, so this is nice. Uh, 
get it now because that's going to be spiking now. They'll be in season. Mm -hmm. uh, two miniature to feature. This is very nice amber. Amber is a classic. Uh, it's It's from Fernandez Mahalo, uh, and the, the nice about amber is it's very compact grower. It's very, uh, and also and a beautiful leaf, and then and the very fragrance also. And this is the blue polaric one, and they are let's look at look at the leaf. The leaf is kind of shining, silver-ish, and you can get the mature side cheaper. I think mature side is. It gonna flower anyway, uh, but the, the this is the size, fully mature size for four years, so perfect for under light. The next one, oh, another wonderful species. They just come into spike now, so this is another very rare species called Fernandosa concerner from Johor region of the Indonesia. So it's a novelty phalaenopsis, almost like a shell-like, and it's miniature. And the, the print don't get very big. It's wonderful color. So uh, I'm gonna try to use this for, for some primary hybrid. So uh, I'm very pleased with the color on this one here. And it's, it's also sequential flowers, so it will keep blooming from the tips, okay. And Eric want me to remind people, uh, this is the one I named after Linda Lee Earl. And if you think about this one here, we almost sold out and she's fabulous. You know, this is one of my proud uh, big lip with Harlequin. Two spike and also, and, and this is first bloom for two spike. Okay, so that will complete for today's uh, segment. So I will watch, I will see you next week. And next week we will do something totally different with, uh, I'll talk about some of the uh, New Guinea Dendrobium. So thank you for joining me this week. And give me anything you want to add? Uh, we will do better next week. With you anyway. <laughs> and, and I promise not to say, I promise not to say 24 hour fitness. Hey, we were going to send the director to a director school for Orchid Sim. <laughs> Take Roger too, as well. We, are, we are, they, they all they, they, they all volunteer. Roger and and, and Jeff is a volunteer. Hey, and thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, are you strong? Off. Okay. <laughs> hey, nah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. I gave it to you already.